Well, that was definitely interesting. Hang, hang so badly yesterday. So, I originally wanted to do this video tomorrow, but do something that's to be on my control. Especially given how my nephew was over earlier. I decided that between everything that's going on outside this channel, as well as the next Twilight Wings special coming out tomorrow, I decided I think I'll move it to the day instead. So, with that in mind, and here's my here are my action thoughts on the latest Japanese about Pokemon Journeys with the second episode of the one of the Darkest Day Arc Sword and Shield Part Two, The Black Knight. Yes. Picking up where we left off, off I, off off Ash and Go are still in their respective have missions in the. A Gala region to help investigate the Dynamax phenomenon on the long side. Professor Magnolia and her granddaughter Sonia. Yeah, though this that apparently isn't revealed just yet until this episode how to who who go at least and given how he's still carpooling with her her across the region. And because I guess as Corviknight Taxi might be a bit dicey and hey, when the sky look looks almost as red as 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 it did in the end of Justice League movie. Fingers crossed about how how the Snyder Cut's gonna go. Oh, and on that note, how it, she also reveals that he knows that that she and Leon knew each other when they were kids and also to see how their respective career paths diverge, like how they both want to be transnationally, but eventually Leon became the champion of Galar, and Sonia became a researcher her who will become her grandmother's exceptional success as a professor, and I have to say, as someone who, is, who thinks Professor has always been some of my favorite characters in, in the franchise, I is that Magnolia has easily joined the list of my favorites, I mean... That's and even as they eventually get to where they need to need to be certain still on side, hide, and the mural it definitely says a lot about the how the how they the handle this adaptation and also as for her the suppose the slight his emotion sickness between Go and Radboot, I mean I know her mini seemed by the mileage but it's hardly really as bad as like Rouse Dower's infamous Jalopy. seriously. If you haven't seen Amos T3P on Battle Line of Sacrifice, go check it out. It's really funny. Yeah. Elsewhere, here, Ash and Leon are helping contain Hain more of the Dynamaxing Pokemon near the Galar Mine. Mine. Though, we don't see which side of it, of it just yet. But, but we do see that even though Giovanni is in the region, that, that was just one of Oleana's spies. Eyes. It turns out Team Rock is being set undercover in the mines as well. Now, oh, I'm guessing that part of the help in this they might get in this episode might be, in these arcs, might be hey, in regards to Magical Cosmos simply invoking, once again, the only one not to defeat you on, hurt you on their regard, it made sense. Alright, and on, on that note, how it's, even though the Hey, mine workers were saved. They start throwing more or debris at Colossal Soul until Rose tells him to stand down. The fact they willingly do so after he says that once also instinctively tells all of the character I mean at her end. I really like how all of this anime is approaching all locations as well. I mean, sometimes they completely redesign stuff. I still think that. If they do maybe visit Hoenn in the near future, that, that they definitely could rectify that about oh, the mishandling fortress say last time. I am. And. But a lot of the ones that are going to be key fiction stories, such as. as Hammerlock, uh, still on side, uh, with a mirror on, on your there. There. And even in something simple as Laboratory in between Postwick and Wedgehurst. I definitely tweeted he had, he had a couple nice skips about that, like featuring both Michael Rosen, because British, and and Detective from South Park. 
So, yeah. Even though... How... How I, I note that... There are some slight liberties being taken. They actually do want to do make sense, given how... I'm not sure how they're going to handle you know, Hop if they introduce him, but Go seems to be in that same role as Deuteragonist. As to mean being more studious and 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 not as active as Ash usually is, mean and then I like how they both find out how what Rose is after or potentially sense it in their own ways, like how how with Magnolia uh also says she has, a, she has a bad feeling about this, so I am guessing Magnolia is also force sensitive instead in this as anime as well. On that note during the whole little bit where you know, Rose takes Ash to dinner, even with offering to be one of and to sponsor him along with with Oleana, he declines, saying that he wants to see things on his own legs and his own terms, just like him, him being a sort of tenual time lord. Her wanting to basically put on a snazzy new pair of running shoes and just seeing how far the road goes. But Oleana's rage mode is definitely pretty spot on too. Who I mean, the animation especially is fantastic. Like I'm really liking the style they went with and how, again, how accurately they recreated it wind in and also little touches like how like the car is on the left side of the road. Oh, oh like the way all the streets are laid out out uh, themselves and and even like how they have the Pokemon equivalents of landmarks or at least I point out my I six monthly review of the game of things like the Piccadilly Circus and Trafalgar Square I've ever seen before and the uh, Haya, and, and Yuki Hayashi's music is so fantastic I think the album just came out but I do admit during the dinner scene, I'm surprised as we don't see Endeavor or Hawk sitting at a table next to them. Um, I guess I will just deal with the fifth season of MHA being pushed back to next year as it comes. Yeah. So, the next day, as Ash and Leon are still trying to contain and everything with their Pokemon about the Dynamax scene, and one's going crazy even when they're not near a power spot. Uh, naturally, he, he, given how Go gets his own Dynamax band that was forged from Wishing Star that crashed in front of them, um, um, a time, basically one of, one of the guards from, uh, one of all the spies friends from leaving, and as Go's Raboot engages his, his Garboder, which in the Dynamax form, when the GMAX form looks more like Hadora the small monster than ever, ever. Results with him, much like in the game, breaking the makeshift mural, or to reveal the actual meaning of the sword and shield of legend that was, was thought to have been lost to time to point becoming legend and myth. That the sword and shield are respectively two heroes, not just one, as you now believe. I mean, and as, and before I wrap this up, I mean, what is a lot, a lot of, of these stories and revealing and that the past was a lot more dramatic than they're them claiming? I mean, Thor Ragnarok, Black Panther, Frozen 2, even Trolls War Tour right here did it, I mean. At least that's what the honest trailer and the cinema center had believed, so there's that. Yeah. So, even though, again, I'm not certain exactly what the future will hold especially as his franchise heads towards his 25th anniversary next year. I do know this. This episode is another fantastic way of adapting the... being a lot of the game's plot points. And while a lot of purists initially he sneered at the, the idea of that, that uh, it wasn't just going to be adapting the new games, but including content of all the previous ones, I really think that the way they're approaching this has benefited the series immensely. I mean, in sense... And so it allows that people to enter it on their own terms, and and definitely think it's the idea is less reboot and more reimagining sense. And so they, I'm glad they took their time, 
And even though this is still fairly early on in Journey's Run, I still doesn't really think it seem like they're uh, going too much too soon. I mean, I mean that's basically the difference between how how like the Liu Yang counter in the second episode of this anime and how that contrasts to how how well, I think they went they went a bit too far too soon with Omnimon and the twenty twenty Digimon Adventure reboot and. I mean, that series is allegedly going to be like a dozen or so episodes longer than the original one, so there's no reason it had to be rushing anything like that at all. Oh man, I like lost some parts of it before, but I'm, I'm, I don't want to get too off track here. But I think I'll include this special Twilight Wings episode once it's dubbed in another vlog if I watch it. That's all the other topics I want to address as tomorrow. And there's all the topics like a new Mandalorian Friday, so. I'll definitely, he will see you all later. Bye. Mm.